Hello everybody, this is Mosquito, also known as Chris with themodzoo.com. Today we're going to take a look at the Silverstone FTZ01-E. And this is a mini ITX case, although they do say that it will fit a mini DTX if you happen to have that size. They're not particularly common, but if you have one, Silverstone says that will fit in this case. And it is kind of a tower. You could also set it up like a desktop or an HTPC style case. They provide either a stand that I'll show you later, well a pair of stands to keep it upright, or you could also mount a couple of bumpers on this side or the other if you had a preference which side your I.O. is on, that will raise it up a little bit and then act as feet. But it's pretty compact and it can fit regular sized hardware. This part here that goes all the way around the top and the front and the bottom is one solid piece of aluminum. But the rest of it is steel or plastic, depending on which parts. All right, so before we start taking a look at the inside, we will take a look at all of the features that you get on the outside. So on the front, you have a power button down here and a reset button and your combination hard drive and power LEDs here, just a little slot. Then you've got a pair of USB 3.0 ports, your headphone and microphone jacks, pretty standard. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there's a really faint Silverstone, kind of a shiny on kind of a dull, so it's there, but not screaming in your face, which is actually something that I, I actually do like quite a bit. Moving on to the top or right or the side that opens, you have just a single 120 millimeter fan opening and they also include three of these magnetic ultra fine mesh. It's really, really thin mesh, but they are magnetic. They also have holes in them so that if you wanted to mount a fan through them, you could easily do that which is probably what I would end up doing because these don't stay in there the best. They have a tendency to move around a lot. So if you're ever gonna be moving your case or have kids or animals or whatever, you may wanna just put the screws through the fan filter into the fan because I think that'll help keep things in place. You have a little bit of mesh up here along the top and then similarly along the bottom, there's a little bit of mesh there. Motherboard I.O., a little bit of mesh above that, a little bit of mesh below the graphics card. Your graphics card is roughly in the middle. You only have two expansion slots, so if you have a three expansion slot card, that's probably the one exception that's really going to get you in trouble, but I honestly don't know how many of those cards there are anymore. I don't even know if any exist. And then you have your power extension, like I said before, you've got that you plug in there and then that goes to the power supply up in the front. There's also room for one of those Kensington locks. If you wanted to, it goes through the side panel and into the chassis so you can lock things down that way if you need to. And then on this side, which is either the left, the bottom, whatever you want to call it, there's two more of your fan filters and then room for a pair of 120 millimeter fans and the intake for the power supply along with the four screws that hold the bracket in for that. All right, so let's get this thing open and take a look at what we've got going on on the inside. And like most cases, you've just got a pair of screws that hold the side panel on or top panel depending on how you do it and it just pops off like normal. Nothing crazy about it, just a steel side panel, your standard kind of arrangement. So nothing major there. Right, taking a look on the inside, you can start to see just how full this thing is. And it's not that hard to imagine how difficult it might be to arrange all of your cables if you have full length cables. This is the short cable kit with the Silverstone power supply. I think it was a 750 watt maybe or a 700 watt, 80 plus platinum. And it's part of the series that all kind of share the same pinout, which is really nice. That's probably one of my favorite things about Silverstone power supplies is the one-to-one -one pinout 
on the 24 pin connectors. So you have 24 pins coming out of the power supply, 24 pins on the other end, makes making your own cables really easy. And I really like that about these. But anyway, taking a look here, you can see this is about the size of the motherboard and that's really the only hole in the case. <laughs> so this is a Silverstone cooler I can't remember the exact model name, but I'll put it on the screen right about there, right, right there. And uh, it's uh, shorter, it's I think 54 millimeters tall. I'll put that on the screen somewhere here. I'll put all the specs because I can't remember off the top of my head, but there is plenty of room if I wanted to have a larger cooler. Like I said, you can have up to 83 millimeters tall before you start hitting the side panel, but I'd probably stick to a little bit less so I can still have a fan in that side panel if I wanted to. And other than that, everything is pretty compact. You have enough room to get your cables up around the top, but not a lot. So, yeah. like I said, cable management is probably the most difficult thing about this. And there's a definite order to installing your components that makes life a lot easier which I'll get into that more later as well so over here you've got your power supply mounted and that comes in this little bracket here which you can take out again from those four screws on the outside takes this whole thing out you mount the power supply to that with the four screws on this side of the bracket and then you put the whole shroud thing back in screwed in from the outside and you're good the intake is on the side and then the exhaust would come straight out the top here. So that's pretty much your only exhaust for your power supply is this mesh that's up here. Not the most ideal, but in all honesty, half the time the power supply is probably not going to be trying all that hard. So not really something that I would worry about. Something that I would consider doing though is getting an SFX power supply and then using an adapter plate to mount that in this, just so you have a little bit more space to tuck your cables away and hide that kind of stuff because it is an ITX system. So I feel like you don't need to have all the power that an ATX power supply can give you, but at the same time, it is also nice to have a little bit of headroom if you need it. And then down here is kind of the whole system for mounting the graphics card and you can get three of your SSDs or two and a half inch drives mounted here. One of them is mounted here on that side, on the inside. And then you mount two of them here, they slide in here and then you just put the screws in through the top and then you can put your cables in that way. It is an interesting system. I'm sort of on the fence with it though. It's, it's definitely functional and it does the job. It is all plastic and you do get a graphics card support that I'll show you in a minute. But at the same time, it's a little inconvenient when you're trying to install things. But um, uh, how much is that really a bad thing? I mean, once you've installed the system, you've installed the system. There's a good likelihood that you're not going to ever go back in in the next year or maybe two years or maybe even three years for some people or even more than that. And then you do get a PCI Express X16 riser and an extension, which is also interesting. So you have this, which is actually a PCB riser. This isn't a ribbon cable. It is actually a hard riser cable, which is actually pretty nice. I, I'm a fan of hard risers if you can get away with that rather than a cable. But the weird thing is that it comes with that and then an extension. So you have the hard riser and then there's a really short extension that you have to plug the graphics card into and then into the riser in order to fit the whole thing together. And to me, it feels like they should have been able to redesign it slightly to get that a little bit closer so you didn't need that second riser. But at the same time, I guess if it works, it works. So it's just one of those little weird oddity things. Well, that pretty much sums up all the hardware that I can get into without starting to take some things apart. So let's start working on that.
So to get this thing off, there are six screws in total. There's two right up here on the back of the chassis. So there's those two, and then there's two right there and two right here. And then after you do that, this just comes straight up. Now here is the graphics card holder that I was talking about before. And that's just a thing to hold on to the graphics card. It's adjustable. This is almost as thick as it will allow though. And this isn't anything too spectacular. It's just a gigabyte Oris, uh, what was it, 570? And it's not the craziest graphics card, but according to this, it depends on the design of the graphics card, whether or not this will work. So where you start getting into trouble is if your graphics card is too tall, this won't be able to mount. So this is about as far up as you can go. And beyond that, you start to hit the bracket and then you won't be able to use it. A graphics card up to 13 inches long, 330 millimeters, it should fit. Um, the standard width this direction is 4.38 inches or 111 millimeters. That should fit fine with the graphics card holder. You can get up to 5.16 inches or 131 millimeters before you start running into this thing. And if you don't use that support, you can go up to 149 millimeters tall, which is roughly 5.88 inches. So, like I said earlier, you can fit an awful lot of graphics card in this if you really want to, but it's just, you may have to stop using that thing. And this also shows you what I was talking about here. You've got your riser here, and then back down in here, you can see that that goes to here, and then there's another short little riser that goes from up there to down here that your graphics card actually sits in. From here, where the PCB on the graphics card is, to the bottom of the chassis, not including fans, is 68 millimeters. So if you don't have fans mounted in the bottom, you can get a pretty thick graphics card. With the um, fans in place here, obviously you're gonna be down to what, like 53? These are 15 millimeter fans, but you do have room if you want it to, uh, you know, you can fit full-size fans in there. They have this nice little path here so you can route your graphics card cables through here, which on a lot of graphics cards is right where they come in, or you can also go this way. I, I know that that's probably more what they intended was to go through here, but I liked it through there better just because it kept things a little bit tidier. But there is a little recess here, so once you've threaded them through, you can get the, the wires to lay flat here if you have flat wires. But I ran them through there and then through this little hole. But then things get kind of annoying because when you have your graphics card mounted, well here, I'll just show you what I'm talking about. Well now you have to run that cable if you were trying to run it through this little cable way, which I can't imagine why you wouldn't. I mean, that's right where it is, you know? It's right where your graphics card wires seem like they should be doing going because this plate is that way, so you'd either have to go through that little tiny spot up there, yeah, not gonna happen, or you're gonna have to come back around here anyway. So I think rather than having to fish it between that plastic and the back of the graphics card, I would have rather have seen this open. So like if this had an opening through there and through here, this one's probably not required because you're down below the graphics card, but in this little plastic here, being able to go through that would have been really nice. As a result, I had to run the cable for my graphics card before I installed the graphics card and then make sure that I got all that stuff out of the way so that I could actually get everything installed and then hooked up. It kind of starts getting into what I was talking about, about how there's a definite order of operations for installing things that makes your life a whole lot easier. But this is just a plastic ABS, ABS plastic, 
And that's what holds everything from two of your two and a half inch drives over here. And then there's room for more over here. So you would mount that down here. There's a couple of screwed holes there. And then all of these holes allow for that graphics card support system to sit in wherever you need it or wherever it doesn't block off airflow to your fans or whatever. We can see the two 120 millimeter fans that came pre-installed, well, came with the case, I should say. That one came pre-installed, but this one was actually mounted to the side panel. But I just decided I'd rather have the two on the graphics card because it's a lot easier to add one here later. Uh, so otherwise I'd have to go through everything and try and, you know, take everything half apart to get to the fans. So I just put the two factory fans there. They are not PWM, like I said, but I mounted those to the graphics card areas to help cool that off. And then all of the cables, I tried to run around it because all your IO cables are all the way up here, as well as the cable that goes around for your power supply. Kind of everything snakes its way back around there. And there's a little bit of room. If you wanted to tuck cables up there, you could. There's a little bit of room up here. There's some room down here. But I try to keep wires as far away from any spots that they can get into fans as I can. Because how obnoxious would that be? You just get everything all together and then one of these wires starts to snake its way in there. So you start running this thing and all you hear is that noise, you know. Moving on, you've got all your power cables here. I'm going to unplug the... USB 3.0 cable, get that out of the way, but this is why you run into space limitations on your power supply. There's a metal bracket right here that acts as support for the graphics card holder as well as room to mount another SSD. Yeah, that's not a lot of room. <laughs> so you can kind of see just how not a lot of room there is. I was able to install these cables with the power supply already mounted in the chassis without having to remove that little wall, but it's not easy. So it's definitely recommended that you take this side panel or this little mid plate out, I guess. I don't even know what you would call it, support plate. I would definitely recommend taking it out. So there's just two screws that hold it on down here and then the whole thing slides up and then you can take it right out. I would probably do that. I didn't the first time. It was sort of annoying. But overall, yes, you can, if you really want, install all of your cables for your power supply with enough determination without taking that whole thing out. But yeah, what do you do? Mounting the motherboard is just like in any other case, although I will say the motherboard that I have has these little Wi-Fi antennas. That actually made it pretty obnoxious because it's just enough to make it pretty difficult to clear the power supply shroud and all of this stuff with those two things. That was obnoxious, but the way that Silverstone kind of re recommends you install things is motherboard first and then power supply. So what I would suggest if you're going to do that, which if you don't have the Wi-Fi antennas here, I don't think you need to do it in that order. You could probably get away with doing the power supply first and then the motherboard. But with the Wi-Fi antenna there, I think you want to install the motherboard, take out this panel, and then sort of slide the power supply in that direction because it, I couldn't get it to go into where it needed to from this direction with that plate. It was kind of annoying, but it, they have a lot of instructions in the manual around that kind of a thing. So they kind of show you in here, you know, like, hey, this is how you take everything apart. You know, take things apart in this order. You take out the graphics card holder. You take out this little mid plate. You can take out the shroud for the power supply. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, install your motherboard, install your power supply, and then you want to go ahead and install your graphics card and then any SSDs. Go ahead and run the wires. Blah, blah, blah. 
and then ta-da, you're done. <laughs> if only it was that easy, right? But overall, it, it actually isn't horrible to build in. It's just got a pretty specific order. So wrapping up real quick before we get into the final thoughts and price and all that stuff. These were the little stands that I was talking about that Silverstone includes. They include two of these. They're basically just friction fit, so they, they're adjustable like this. And you just slide them together, and then they fit around the case like so. And there's a pair of little rubber pads there so that you don't have to worry about them too much. They don't honestly hold the greatest, so like you slide them together, but they still move pretty freely. Not the biggest fan. It seemed to be standing up fine on its own, but this does make it a little bit better. I don't honestly think it's going to be that good because you start going like that. I don't see how those things aren't just going to expand out and let it fall over, you know what I mean? But I, eh, whatever. <laughs> it's definitely a lot better than nothing, that's for sure. I don't, know. I don't think I'm really too much of a fan of them, but I think it will help a little. It just, eh. Four of these little bumpers, they're just half round black bumpers that let you s peel and stick right on the side or the bottom, I guess, if you're gonna be mounting it that way. They'll work, yeah, they're fine. They're just, you know, black rubber bumpers. I don't really like those either. If I was gonna be doing something, I'd probably try and find some aftermarket case feet just to dress things up a little bit if I was gonna be doing a horizontal install. But the last kind of main accessory that they give you is a fan splitter and this actually is a PWM splitter even though you don't get PWM fans and it is actually sleeved in paracord so it's actually a pretty nice fan splitter and it's not bad yeah they say you can fit an all-in-one cooler but then they also go ahead and say yeah the recommended water cooler is the TD03 slim from Silverstone so I don't have one of those, so I can't confirm that it actually does fit. So we'll just have to take their word for it. Uh, it from the picture there, I'll have to look up the specs online, but it looks like the radiator might be even thinner than this, but I can't really tell. But it definitely had a picture of a slim fan on it, which is pretty much gonna be a must because if we do that, you can already see how close we're getting to not having any clearance there. So yeah, basically the fan would end up about here if you didn't use it, which would put that here. Yes, technically that would fit, but it's pretty close and you're gonna have to be very mindful of what RAM you end up with if it ends up taller than the CPU block and well, pump I guess too, then you're probably gonna end up being in trouble for clearance. So. Yeah, they say it'll fit an all-in-one, but again, you're just gonna have to take their word that their cooler will fit because this is a Corsair H60, pretty standard. Actually, it's probably relatively small as far as all-in-ones go, and it just doesn't quite fit. So there you go. All right, so that was a review of the Silverstone FTZ-01E. This is the black version, but it also comes in silver, if that's your choice. And currently, the retail price for this at Newegg is, I believe, $155 or $160 on Amazon, something like that. And I think it's probably worth that if this is a size and aesthetic that you're looking for. Obviously, it's not going to be for everyone because you are relatively limited in hardware. You can pretty much fit whatever graphics cards you want, but the CPU cooler is going to be a little bit of a limiting factor as far as how much horsepower you can cram into this thing. You can fit a full-size ATX power supply in it. You are definitely going to want to try and do what you can to either find a short cable set, make sure you can get one for your power supply, or make a set of short cables for it and obviously you're not gonna be able to fit an extremely long power supply in there either just because of the space limitations but other than that it's really not that much of a compromise to go with something like this versus a like mini ITX tower a more traditional tower 
you can fit probably whatever graphics cards you have, whatever graphics card you want. I mean, well, you know, we all want, but practically what you're going to be able to get your hands on. But it's it's just one of those things that it's definitely a niche because it is a very specific size and it's a particular arrangement and you are going to have to do a little bit of work when you put everything together initially just to make sure that you do things in the right order and that you make sure everything is ready to go in the order that they say it should. That said, I didn't think that it was really that bad to build in, but I've also built quite a few systems and when I do my case modding and my scratch building, a lot of them are smaller than this. So maybe that has something to do with it. But overall, I actually do like the case quite a bit and I think it's a pretty solid choice if it fits what you're looking to do.